Welcome to Module 3, Video 2 from the Safe and Effective Use of AI in Education Online Resources. In the first video of this module, we had an introduction to some of the key risks related to AI and education. And in this video, we'll explore some of the risks in more detail. It's important to remember that if you encounter any incident that is a safeguarding concern, whether or not it's related to AI, you must follow the statutory guidance Keeping Children Safe in Education, which includes protecting children online, as well as your organisation's safeguarding procedures. The advice in this toolkit is not meant to replace your safeguarding training, but explores some of the risks that are specific to generative AI systems. In the DFE's Generative AI Product Safety Expectations, the Department for Education provides clear guidance that outlines the capabilities and features that generative AI products and systems should meet to be considered safe for users in educational settings. Key areas of the guidance include content filtering, activity monitoring, security, data protection, intellectual property, transparency and accountability. We will cover some of these in this module in more detail. When considering online safety, we know that the online world often mirrors or even amplifies the same behaviour issues we see offline. For instance, online bullying can be much more pervasive and difficult to stop than offline bullying. With this in mind, it's important for school leaders to regularly update safeguarding policies and behaviour policies to reflect the rapidly changing risks from AI use. There is further guidance on this in the Leadership Toolkit. The UK's Online Safety Act puts a range of new duties on social media companies and search services, making them more responsible for their users' safety on their platform. It's important to remember that safeguarding is everyone's responsibility. As a teacher, lecturer or other member of school or college staff, it's essential to understand your role in keeping children safe online. Keeping children safe in education highlights the importance of online safety training for all staff, ensuring you are aware of the risks and your responsibilities. You should familiarise yourself with your school's filtering and monitoring systems and know what to do if you have concerns about a child's online activity. Your designated safeguarding lead or DSL should be your go-to for guidance on online risks and regular training will help you to stay updated on emerging threats. Being informed about online safety in your teaching and conversations with students will help to increase awareness of online dangers. By taking a proactive approach, you contribute to a whole school safeguarding culture that protects students both in and out of the classroom. The content we create using generative AI tools can be very useful. However, as with all systems, there is the potential for misuse. In Module 2, we learnt that AI systems are trained on large amounts of existing data, and so they may reproduce bias that already exists in society, or replicate bias introduced by the people who designed the AI model. This means we need to critically evaluate the output to make sure it's appropriate for our use. We've previously explored some of the unintentional inaccuracies, known as hallucinations, that result from a way generative AI system works. With AI audio, image and video generation tools, people can generate content that is misleading or harmful. You can make it appear that someone said or did something that they didn't, and this is known as a deep fake. The rise of AI-generated child sexual abuse images presents a serious safeguarding threat, with predators using AI to manipulate real images of children, create deepfake content, and generate disturbingly realistic abuse material. These images not only exploit children, but also re-victimise survivors of past abuse. Offenders are using AI to groom, blackmail, and coerce children, making detection more difficult and increasing the risk of our pupils and students face online. In response, the UK is introducing new laws that criminalise the possession, creation and distribution of AI tools designed to generate child sexual abuse materials. The government, alongside charities and safeguarding organisations, 
stressed that AI misuse must be tackled alongside its benefits. Ensuring technology does not outpace child protection. Teachers play a key role in safeguarding by staying informed, recognising risks and supporting pupils in navigating the online world safely. The fact that digital tools required to generate these images are freely available makes it more difficult to detect the creation of these materials. It also increases the potential for young people to be able to generate images they might otherwise be blocked from accessing online. Schools need to ensure that filtering and monitoring systems are effective in dealing with these risks. In addition, it's possible for generative AI technology to be used to create very realistic avatars and chatbots that can simulate human conversation and interaction. This can make it almost impossible to distinguish between a real person and an avatar, and this has the potential to be used for grooming. The UK's 2023 counter-terrorism strategy highlights that emerging technologies, including generative AI, present both risks and opportunities for counter-terrorism efforts. While the full impact of generative AI on terrorist activity online is still unfolding, there is already evidence of early experimentation, such as using AI to generate synthetic propaganda, also known as deep fakes. Although we have not yet seen widespread adoption, we know that these technologies are going to become more sophisticated, and so there's a risk that extremist content will become even more convincing and harder to detect. If combined with other tools, AI-generated propaganda could be produced and distributed at an industrial scale, potentially overwhelming content moderation systems and increasing the challenge of countering online radicalisation. To address these concerns, the UK is actively working to understand the risks associated with generative AI and exploring mitigation strategies. This includes monitoring how extremists may try to exploit AI for recruitment, misinformation and incitement, while also considering how AI can be used as a tool to strengthen counter-terrorism efforts. Educators have a vital role to play in supporting young people to develop critical thinking skills, enabling them to recognise AI-generated misinformation, question extremist narratives and navigate the online space safely. This aligns with the PREVENT duty, which requires schools and colleges to safeguard students from radicalisation by building their resilience to extremist content and online influence. We've got to think really carefully about how we safeguard people, um, both in terms of protecting their data, um, and that's not just their sort of personal data, but also protecting what they produce, because we know that when those things go into an AI model, they sort of become lost to you in terms of your ownership um, of that information. So we need to think really carefully about that. Um, we also need to think about the impact that AI outside of school is having on us as, as human beings, so the way that it's being used in social media, the way that we're interacting with other things and it's influencing what we think because the AI is showing us more things that it thinks we like. To help to mitigate this, schools and colleges also need to ensure that their online safety policies are up to date and make sure we always follow safeguarding procedures as set out in keeping children safe in education. As educators, we must all be aware of the potential for AI tools to be used to generate misleading or harmful content and look for opportunities to enhance pupils' and students' understanding about misinformation and deepfakes alongside the laws that are in place. Critical thinking and AI literacy are the terms often used to describe approaches that can be promoted within the existing curriculum. In addition, the National Centre for Computing Education has produced curriculum resources that support an understanding of online safety, AI and the associated risks. You saw in earlier modules that some AI models are trained with text that is inputted as a prompt and this means we need to be particularly careful about the information we enter as prompts. Entering sensitive or personal information may result in a data breach, which should be reported promptly to your data protection officer. You can mitigate this by only using AI tools for work that are provided by your school or setting and which have appropriate safeguards in place. The Department for Education's Data Protection in Schools project developed a video on offering guidance on protecting children's privacy when using AI. You should avoid entering any personal information or student work into an AI system unless your setting has said it's safe to do so and appropriate permissions are in place. It's also very important to be transparent about how you're using the tools.
When using AI, it's crucial to understand the difference between data protection and intellectual property, two distinct legal considerations that sometimes get confused. Under UK GDPR, if you're processing personal data, that's information that identifies an individual, such as pupil names, assessment or work, for example, you must have a lawful basis. This could be consent, contract, legal obligation, vital interests, public task or legitimate interest. Before using any AI tool that processes personal data, you must ensure that it complies with UK GDPR. If the tool stores, learns from or shares the data, you could be breaching data protection law unless appropriate safeguards are in place. Intellectual property or IP is a separate issue. IP law protects original creative work, including lesson plans, teaching resources, and pupils' and students' work. If you use an AI tool that trains on uploaded content, you need to ask, do I have the legal right or necessary permissions to use this material, and who owns the copyright? For instance, under UK copyright law, a pupil or student automatically owns the copyright of their written work, artwork, or other creative outputs. If you upload their work into an AI system that stores or reuses it, you may need their explicit permission or the permission of a parent or guardian, depending on the circumstances. To summarise, data protection is about safeguarding personal data and ensuring that you have a lawful basis for processing it. Intellectual property law governs ownership and permission for using copyrighted materials, including learning resources and pupils or students' work. Before using AI, always check both to ensure compliance. In the case of student or pupil work, we could be infringing intellectual property rights if, for example, we were to enter their work into an AI system for marking or feedback. Intellectual property covers a broader range of creative and original works, including text, images, music and code. While personal data laws focus on protecting individuals, IP laws protect the rights of content creators and copyright holders. Before using AI to generate or manipulate content based on someone else's work, such as using an LLM or large language model for marking or feedback on students' work, permissions must be obtained from the rights holder. This distinction is crucial because an individual's work may be protected even if it does not contain personal data. We should be certain that the AI system being used doesn't train on the work that we enter and that it meets the DFE's product safety requirements. In the example of marking student work, it's important to be transparent about how AI is being used and ensure that the AI tool is fit for purpose. It must always be used with human oversight and not used to replace the important human feedback we know can be very effective in improving progress. Educators, organisations and AI developers must be aware of both requirements to ensure compliance with legal and ethical standards when using AI tools. It's also important to only use AI systems approved by your setting. In the example we're about to hear from Scott Hayden, his college provided access to an AI system for students. They did this very carefully, ensuring that it was a closed system that doesn't train on the data or prompts given by users. It also has appropriate monitoring, filtering and reporting built in with regard to the DfE's product safety expectations and keeping children safe in education guidance. They also provided key training for the students to help them get the best out of it and use it safely. So the way we've considered the potential drawbacks of AI is to be very transparent with our policy. When learners start our courses at the college, so they are presented with the policy, uh, do's and don'ts, and they agree to it in enrolments, and they have it made very clear to them as part of their AI module they do in week one, as part of their induction, how to use AI the right way, how to what and also what constitutes using AI the wrong way. We try to make that as unambiguous as possible. We also state very clearly that it is um, against our policy to counterfeit human likeness. We have zero tolerance for counterfeiting human likeness. So what I mean by that is to take somebody and to counterfeit text, audio, image or video of somebody else without their consent, we have zero tolerance for that because we've seen horrific instances of this being done. 
and with the rise of deep fakes and other uses of AI that are less than nice, uh, we need to be very clear about the fact that we use AI to help us learn, we use it the right way, and we need to show them very clearly and state very clearly what is unacceptable. It's important to remember to follow your settings guidance on safeguarding and online safety. Educators and leaders are reminded that the Department for Education's Keeping Children Safe in Education statutory guidance provides schools and colleges with information on what they need to do to protect pupils and students online, their responsibilities with regard to limiting children's exposure to risks from the schools or colleges IT system, how to review and strengthen their cybersecurity. Generative AI could be used to increase the sophistication and credibility of attacks. Again, you can find more about this in the Leadership Toolkit.